I think they won all their games. But then uh, they have to leave, and they have to go to Jerome, Arkansas. Well, when they went to Jerome, they also dominated that uh, league. So I'm pretty proud to know that there were a few players, I think, that played in the Illinois Park Mountain Lohila team that was a member of the foreign team. Okay, but anyway, uh, that is my uh, introduction to baseball. Uh, I'd like to introduce a fellow here. He's a member of the Society of the American Baseball Research, and he's also an expertise in including Japanese and American baseball, uh, Mr. Bill Staples. What an honor to be here. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, pretty cool. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. A little better? All right. I am 5'9 on a good day. All right. Well, as Carrie mentioned earlier, uh, this is kind of a dream come true. Um, you need to put it up higher. <laughs> Turn it up more? No, no, the speaker should be higher. Oh, no. It's being blocked by everybody here. Well, I'll try to speak as loud as possible. Okay. Uh, this is a dream come true. Uh, Carrie and I have been organizing events like this for the last couple of years. Um, we have a, a vision that we would actually perhaps go back to Heart Mountain. And I had this crazy idea that we'd all be in a Win Winnebago driving 1,200 miles up to Wyoming. And that wasn't very practical. So I got on a flight and uh, I, I left Arizona this morning. And uh, I'm uh, glad to be here and really appreciate it. Everyone making the trip. All right. So with that, uh, let me just go over uh, kind of the, the outline for today's event. Oh, and by the way, when we planned this two months ago, we knew that the Royals and the Giants were going to be in the world. So <laughs> <laughs> and, and have a nice representation of Japanese American ball players. So, and at the same time, when Carrie and I wrote our books, we knew that we Don Wakamatsu would be in the World Series and Travis Ishikawa, both on our covers. Don, Don wrote the forward to my book. Yeah. Can, yeah, why don't we turn the light down? Yeah. And by the way, these, these visuals are just uh, to kind of support the conversation. Okay. So with that, uh, just a quick agenda of what we'll be covering. Uh, we have our panel discussion from 1 to 2. We'll have a, I'm going to open it up to the general audience and have you guys ask questions from 2 to 3. And then from 2.30 to 3, we're going to have a book signing downstairs. And our objectives for today, we want to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the famous series of the baseball games between Gila River and Heart Mountain. We want to honor the Nisei baseball pioneers who are with us today and treasure the opportunity to hear their stories firsthand. It's going to be a career. Nice opportunity to do that. We want to educate the public about the Japanese American experience through the prism of baseball. And overall, we want to celebrate the legacy of Japanese American baseball. And before we get started, uh, I would like to, Carrie, could you help me please? Uh, we'll introduce our panel members. Okay. Tell you what, here's our lineup here. Uh, we, we have uh, Chets Furukawa. Joining us from the, the Gila River team. And Tess, uh, could you share your age? Uh, because we have, a, we, have, we have reporters here who would like to know. Share your stats. Okay, no, just your age, if you could. Could you, could you share how old you are? Your age? My age? Yeah. Uh, ask my wife. Okay. <laughs> I think you were born in 1927. Do that. 87. Okay. Kenzo Zanamura. <laughs> also, a, a, a Georgia Seri. Our Georgia Seri was a pitcher with the Hart Mountain team. Um, and uh, Ernie, in a way? Yes, Ernie? Okay. 84. All right. Mm -hmm. And Masao Iriyama? Uh, two weeks, uh, I'm 93. <laughs> <laughs> And then George Ashimoto joining us uh, in your background, your age. <laughs> 86. All right. And with us in spirit, uh, we invited them, but it turns out they're not going to be able to make it today. 
uh, Tom Chesty Okagaki and Chi Akasuki. So we will uh, remember them as we go through our conversation. All right. And before we uh, get started, Tess, would you like to come up and, and share? If you stretch your next a little bit, over here to my right, you will be able to see 1,000 paper cranes. Uh, these 1,000 paper cranes are hereby presented to the Japanese American Museum of San Jose as a gesture of good fortune and in appreciation for hosting today's uh, 70th anniversary celebration when Gila River visited Heart Mountain Incarceration Center in Wyoming in September of 1944 for a Goodwill Baseball Tour. In gratitude by the players of Gila and Heart Mountain, for the players that are here today with us, and also those who are with us in spirit. Uh, these paper cranes were made by a friend of mine in Santa Maria, whose name is Sachi Fujiwara. <coughs> I would like to recite a short haiku poem that I wrote to celebrate this occasion. Sushis to hot dogs. Gila stars to heart mountain. Forever baseball. Thank you very much. I would like to present this uh, to the museum so they will be able to hang this uh, little tag with the uh, cranes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to kind of dovetail on Tet's moving uh, poem and uh, the gift. Tet's was the starting pitcher for the Gila River Eagles when they played the uh, Tucson Badgers, which was an all-community team uh, at Gila River, Arizona. And uh, this team was the state champions for three straight years, had won 52 games straight, uh, had a coach that was... Uh, with the San Francisco Seals, Hanley Slagle. And I asked Mr. Slagle, what was it like going into this concentration camp with a team that hadn't lost in 52 games, had a three-year state championship title? And he goes, well, Kerry, he goes, you know, we were just gonna play a, another ball club that supposedly had some good ball players, uh, regardless of the Bob wire, guard towers. Uh, we just wanted to compete. and. Tetz was a starting pitcher. Kenso was uh, the second baseman. His, his brother, Kenshi Harvey, anywhere, was another all-star on the team. And uh, they beat the Tucson Badgers 11 to 10 in 10 innings. And uh, so it was almost like a Hollywood script. You know, it was bases loaded, uh, two outs. The Eagles were up, Harvey's anywhere. Kinsel's brother was up at the plate, took two, uh, three straight balls, two straight strikes, and on the sixth pitch, he ripped it over the third baseman's head, and uh, Gila won the game, which uh, was not just a baseball victory, it was an, an incredible victory for um, kind of like a David Gol uh, versus Goliath type of win, and Tetz was the, the winning pitcher of that, that amazing game. Uh, Masao Iriyama on the end, he uh, was uh, a part of the semi-pro uh, Guadalupe YNBA team and he was their all-star shortstop and his brother uh, Noboru was a, a great uh, track and baseball player. In fact, he hit a home run against the Tokyo Giants and Masao was a, a strong fielding, strong arm shortstop that uh, was a few old, years older obviously than Kenso and Tetz. But uh, 
in those days you have to look at it the divisions were basically it was a b and c levels a was like semi-pro level b was like a high school level c was like junior high but the kicker was it didn't matter how old you were you could be 15 and on an a team like kenso and tets uh, or you could be 25 and on a c team uh, it just what mattered was your ability the story that i tell about masao was that his youngest brother uh, was uh, when Masao's Guadalupe YMBA team won the camp championship, he also won the batting title and they gave him a hand-carved uh, wooden trophy uh, to take back to his barracks and his parents. And uh, so as he did, he was given a telegram to take back to his parents and he was so proud to show his parents the trophy, but when they opened up the telegram, they found out that Minoru, his youngest brother, was killed over the skies of Tokyo during a Doolittle raid. So, how ironic his parents had to um, feel the victory of Masao and the pride of his uh, championship, but also have the stinging uh, loss of losing their son in Japan. Um, and so, uh, maybe Ralph could kind of give us a little bit more history on George and um, uh, the, the Asahi players, uh, but for me, Tets and Kenso, uh, of course Kenso's Zenimura, he played uh, professional baseball with his brother at, with the Hiroshima Carp in Japan, uh, as a Hall of Fame baseball player at Fresno State, and, uh, and, and the list goes on. He uh, is, is very famous as one of the, uh, and it's still existing today, the All Boys League, which uh, 14 and 15 year old kids get to play each other from Brazil, Mexico, Japan, Hawaii, Fresno, and uh, he's still very much active and, and kind of like his father, you know, this bridge across the Pacific and fostering this wonderful relationship. Um, one of his uh, uh, coaches at one point was Don Wakamatsu, who uh, wrote the foreword to Bill's book, and he's a family friend of ours. He's the bench coach for the Kansas City Royals. Uh, as they play tonight. And Buck O'Neill was like an uncle to me who uh, played with the Kansas City Monarchs, uh, played with Satchel Paige, Josh Gibson. Uh, as much as I love Buck and, and Don, uh, I still don't want to be denied a third World Series ring <laughs> as a third generation Giant. So uh, Kansas City won two games, that's enough. Giants need to <laughs> win two more. Uh, but with uh, the rest of the players, Ralph, did you want to kind of fill in on, on the Asahi history a little bit and, and the two Georges and Ernie? Play ball! <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hi. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know that I have as much to share uh, as Kerry the expert here. And uh, uh, I've just, uh, just finished up a book on uh, San Jose, Japan, John, so that's kind of where my head is. This was a number of years ago that I did the uh, Asahi the Zebra book. Um, I don't know, uh, uh, George, uh, 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 Siri too much except from, from camp. Uh, uh, is playing in camp. I don't know that George played afterwards, George? George? <laughs> George did, did. George is Siri? <laughs> George, can, 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 can you help me a little bit about, uh, I know that you played uh, uh, in camp, and uh, a lot of the players would play on like more than one team, like like every every year people would move to like different teams, you know, so some years you might be on one team, the Zebras, next year you might be on the Old Timers, next year you might be on the Block, you know, 28 team. Can you, can you help me a little bit in terms of what your career was during camp and also maybe following? Well, the first year I played ball was with, again, uh, guy fellows like uh, George Hinaga. Oh yeah, George Hinaga, yeah, come on up, come on up. Yep. <laughs> Sorry about that, I thought you were speaking to someone else. <laughs> Well, my t teammate over here is George Hashimoto. <laughs> so, so, George, let me, let me interview you here a little bit. Let's pretend like we're doing an interview. So, uh, so I know you from playing in camp. Where did you play uh, baseball before camp? 
I played for Wapita Junior High School. Mm -hmm. uh, and did, did you play for any Japanese American teams uh, before camp? No. no. Mm -hmm. I just played for the Junior High School team. Ah, and uh, what was the first team you played for when you were at Heart Mountain? Or, or even at the Assembly Center? First I went to Portman Assembly Center. Yeah. And uh, I think in the book there's Hank Matsubu that played from Modesto. And uh, we were teammates at the Porma Assembly Center. And uh, <clears throat> then uh, I'd like to tell you one time uh, a real hard story. You know, I was at the bat, and this guy named Ralph Takami, he was a three year varsity letterman at Oregon State. And <laughs> he hit me. Right here, and I still got a knob here. <laughs> I think we can rub that out. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, way back in 1942. Yeah. 42, so that was at the Assembly Center. Yeah. Now, when you got to Heart Mountain, what uh, what team did you uh, play for there at Heart Mountain? Like in, uh, you got to play in the fall of uh, 42, Heart Mountain? Well, spring of uh, 43, so spring and summer. I played for the Northerners, uh, fellows like, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, George Yokuda used to put the LA Nips, Chappie Momoto was playing for uh, Portland Fuji, uh, <clears throat> Jack Quinny Tony was playing for high school, Rosie Matsui was an all star shortstop at Fairfax High, and uh, Mm, my memory is not that. Yeah, I know you had mentioned George Hinago. You played with George? Oh, yes. Uh, first year. And uh, <clears throat> early part of 44, but you know, he volunteered for the 442. Mm -hmm. But his brother Russell, he was, I played with him for three years, against him for three years. You played against Russell? Because Russell, a lot, a lot of times, you know, the San Jose teams, the uh, uh, the Asahi teams, the the zebra, team, because you were at camp, you need to divide into a lot of different teams, you know. So teammates, and usually, you know, people that you play with in San Jose, suddenly they're on different teams because you have to split up and share the good players and like that. So they had like zebras A, the zebras B team, and you had the old timers team. You had Asahi guys on their own group and. So a lot like that. So so you played against Russell. How was that? How was that experience? Well, you know, I'm just a greenhorn, right? I was only 15 years old then. <laughs> Russell was about 40. <laughs> so he was all washed up, right? <laughs> no, he wasn't. He was still great. We used to call him War Horse. <laughs> now, I, I heard that... The, Oh, I heard that, here's Russell up here with Jenny, but I heard that uh, uh, Russell was starting to feel his age uh, back in San Jose. He actually retired from the uh, Sahi in uh, 41. And when he got out there into the heat of, uh, of the desert, why his arm limbered up and he, he was raring to go again. So he continued on for some time. Uh, ask ask the test what this guy did to us in Heart Mountain. <laughs> okay, well, let's. Uh, will, will we get to that? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's part of the, the questions. We're gonna after after the introductions. We're gonna okay. So uh, so we're, we we oh, will get to that. Okay, uh, George. Ju just to finish up real quick here. Uh, what did uh, after uh, Heart Mountain? Did you continue to play baseball at all afterwards? I played uh, for my high school. Then after high school, I played in the Idaho Oregon League, and uh, then. At that time, uh, a team from Kansas City called the Kansas City Monarchs. I think I heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, lucky enough to play against them. Wow, wow, that's amazing. But let's move down here to my friend Ernie, Ernie Inouye. Now, uh, Ernie, you played baseball in camp too, but uh, you were kind of a kid and you started a little bit late. Uh, tell, tell me a little bit about your baseball experience in, in, uh, at Hard Mountain. I started with the Zebras. Uh, in 1945, I wasn't involved with the Hila uh, episode because they were in 1944. But you got to go to the games. You watched. You oh, see the game. I watched the game. Yes. Uh, but the, as a 15-year-old, you know, I played against a bunch of these old guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about 
these old guys that were 21. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're 15 years old, everybody's old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I played with uh, Chi, Okizuki, Chesty Okagaki. Chesty Okagaki, yeah. In fact, uh, echoing what uh, George just said, Russell, I played with Russell Hinata. Yeah. He was my catcher. <laughs> That's right, uh, Russell. He could play any position. He could, he's a pitcher. Yeah. He, when he uh, played for the Osage team, he was a pitcher. But, right. Uh, in camp, uh, he actually was my catcher. Mm -hmm. How was he as a catcher? He seemed to know the game. I can tell you one episode that uh, happened. I was pitching, he's catching, and he gives me a signal for fastball. And I shook my head. Because I like curveballs. He <laughs> gives me a signal again for the fastball. <laughs> this happened three times. Finally, he called timeout. He came up to the mound. Uh oh. Yeah, and he started chewing my butt up. <laughs> I was not softly. I mean, everybody could hear it. <laughs> it was embarrassing. But then he went back. And what did you throw? Purple. <laughs> and you're asking for it. <laughs> That's great. And uh, I know that uh, you, you continued playing uh, with the uh, zebras when you got back to San Jose. Correct. Yeah, how, how did that go and how long did you continue on well, with that? Let me see. I threw my arm out and one, I forgot what year it was, but uh, I played for, uh, let's see, from 1945. <clears throat> My best guess is in about 55. Oh, wow. Oh, so, I, oh, I see, I see. So, so you stayed for quite a while. In the meantime. Right, people were busy. People were busy. Okay, well, thank, thank you very much. I, I hope I, we didn't go too over time here. Okay. Oh. Can we, can we cut Tom? I mean, George. Oh, George, excuse me. George, oh, wow. share your background. Yeah. Tell you what, we're, we're gonna go. We're going to go through each game, uh, or at least touch on some of it. So maybe there's an opportunity uh, when we do that for the players to add more detail. Okay. 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 Great. And by the way, one of the rules for events like this, you got to go with the flow. All right. So we have a, a general idea of the direction we want to go, but it's going to be like a jazz concert. Okay. We'll just kind of improv. All right. Uh, a lot of great stories in the game of baseball, but it's also a game of numbers, and I feel like it's important to. Uh, give some background and some context so that you really understand uh, how many games are played and when they were played and the travels, etc. So I'm going to briefly cover that and then we'll dive <coughs> into some of the more uh, conversation behind it. All right? Uh, and I hope that you can see this, but I'll try to walk you through. This is a calendar or just the, the month of September 1944. And you can see that from uh, August uh, 28th, 1944, all the way through, uh, let's see. September 22nd, that's how long the trip to Heart Mountain lasted for Gila River, uh, for the Gila River team. You, and I'll let you guys talk about how you left in two different groups, et cetera. But uh, we see that 13 games were played over the course of 17 days with a little rest in between. And of the 13 uh, games, the, the overall record was nine and four, but it was broken down into a best of seven game series and then another best of seven game series against all, the All-Stars from the four different teams that Ralph talked about, the, the A team, the B team, Block 20, I believe it was, and the amateurs. All right, so anyway, just wanted to give you a sense of the intensity of, in, in all the games that were played. Okay. And then, of course, we know the proximity of Gila River, Arizona to Heart Mountain. It was uh, about 1,200 miles. It took about 20 hours total of, of travel. And I did want to share one interesting thing that I learned through my research. It cost $1,000 for this trip in 1943 when the Gila River team traveled. Uh, to put that in the context of today's dollars with inflation, that's about thirteen dollars to $14,000 to pay for this trip. And there was an agreement that uh, the Heart Mountain team would pay 50% and the Gila River team would pay the other 50% to help offset the cost. But in 1943, uh, the Gila team and the community was able to raise 75% for the, for the Heart Mountain squad. So I thought that that was interesting. Not many people know about the cost behind pulling something like this off. All right? 
So a lot of games were played, and uh, again, we've got uh, some good details and some good scores. We're not going to go through all of it, but I just wanted to, again, share that perspective. But I want to turn it over to the panel now, and ev every, this is open to everybody. If you could, share with me your most memorable experience from the Hart Mountain uh, Gila River series. And if you didn't actually play in the games like Masao, if, Mr. Iriyama, if you could maybe share your experiences playing against the San Jose team uh, back in 43, or, or even before that. Right. So Howard or Tess, would you like to start? Even if you want to start with the, the travels, the game itself, what, what really uh, stands out in your memory? Uh, Tess, why don't you, Tess, could you start? Nate, Tess, why don't you start and tell us about the, the trip itself? Uh, of the 13 games that we played at Heart Mountain, I think the, one of the most remarkable uh, historic game was when, I think it was recall about Heart Mountain, was that after all the games that we, we went to the uh, bathroom to shower up and clean up, that Heart Mountain was gifted with uh, uh, Japanese furo. <laughs> wooden uh, bathtub like pre-war where the whole team could jump in there all at once and it was uh, very relaxing so those are some of the things that I could recall and uh, and another thing I uh, like to say a few words is about this youngster that's sitting right next to me George uh, Isari he's from uh, Wapato Washington which is uh, agricultural town that's something similar to my hometown, which is uh, Guadalupe. And uh, during the, the series with uh, Heart Mountain, uh, George Isari, we lost four games, but George Isari beat us twice. <laughs> he, he was uh, what you call a boy wonder for the Heart Mountain team. He was probably one of the youngest members of that team. Isn't that right, George? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Bill. Actually, I will add that at the end of the series, uh, uh, Most Valuable Player Awards were presented. And uh, Kenshi Zenimura, who was the youngest player on the Hart Mountain team, Harvey, uh, he received the MVP award as well as Tak Abo, the pitcher. Uh, and Mori Shimada for Hart Mountain, who was named their MVP. We'll talk a little bit more about Mori as we go through the conversation. But George Aseri got honorable mention from Coach Zenimura. He said, boy, I wish I had a pitcher like George Aseri on our ball club. So very impressed with George's uh, performance. Not only did he win two games, he also pitched uh, well, uh, in, like deep into the games and pitched shutouts. The games they lost, the team just couldn't, you know, pull it off in, in the last innings. So uh, George really impressed the, the pioneers. So uh, other panel members, I want to share with you, uh, if you could uh, look at these photographs over here. I've included some photographs from uh, the playing days. Can everybody see them? Okay. Okay. So in addition to the stories that we talk about, the photographs will help maybe uh, you know, jog the memory of it. So um, just want to, we'll go through and I'll start at the very beginning. So there's the, the game summary. So we have uh, Tak Abo, pitcher, correct, okay. And Lefty Fujioka, okay. So that's him with your father. Uh, and Bill Shundo. Say the name correctly? Bill. Bill? Okay. So Bill came up quite a bit. Uh, he pitched a lot in the series, and we'll talk about his performance. There's an action photo of Lefty. So it's nice to see the photographs, so as we're going to talk about some of the games and, and then uh, the players that I performed, we can have these images in our mind. Um, it's always nice to look back at the camp newspapers as well to see how they were reported. Uh, this was one of the best documented uh, series I could find in, in all of camp history. It was recorded in the Heart Mountain Sentinel and the Gila River Courier. And uh, Ki Kobayashi, a team member, helped, uh, wrote a journal as well. So you have a player perspective, which was, if it was around today, he would have been blogging and pushing it out, so. 
uh, and then photographs in the, in the camp paper. But um, we have the Heart Mountain team. Great, the, the Heart Mountain sign. Actually, at this point, I'm going to stop and ask a question. Was anybody here involved in the construction of the fields at Heart Mountain? Or anybody know the history behind that? Or even Ralph, do you have any historical context or understanding? Because I know the Gila River story quite well. Yeah, I think Gila River, I mean, that was basically instigated and carried through by, by Zeni Zanamura, right? Yeah. And uh, with the Heart Mountain, it, it didn't come up like that. You no. know, they just, it just seemed to be a natural phenomenon. Although, I know that the Shimadas, and Maury Shimada, who was a great photographer, who took a lot of photos, and, uh, and his brother Frank Shimada, uh, were really uh, strong uh, supporters of sports in general out there. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Shimadas had some influence or participation with that. But no single name ever came out like Zenomura in terms of construction of baseball. Yeah, because even the scoreboard is beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. So we have the uh, the Gila River All Stars, Heart Mountain All Stars, and again, just so you understand, there were four teams at Heart Mountain. There was the A team, the B team, a team called the Amateurs. George, did you pitch on that team? Yes. Okay. And then so block. George Hashimoto. Okay. <laughs> and why were you called the Amateurs? You hadn't made it to the pros yet. You're mainly a younger group. Listen, I, I couldn't hear you. Right? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Is that is they called the team the amateurs because it was mainly the younger players? Uh, I don't know where the amateur came from. Okay. I think Fuzzy Shimada named it. Okay. Okay. And our coach was Tom Sakamoto. Okay. Pre war great uh, Asahi man. Nice. So, this photograph here, I believe it's uh, Zenimir is catching. Anybody know who's hitting in this photograph? That's Maury Shimada. Is that Maury? Okay. Uh, looks like we have a play. Where is that? First? Second? Third? A third? Okay. Well, we'll come back to that. This, I appear, it appears to be maybe Russell pitching. And that's, it's a, kind of tough to tell, but uh, you get a nice view of the field at a heart mountain. Uh, nice action photo from the camps. Kenzo Zenimura, probably hitting a triple or a double here. <laughs> the Zenimura boys. Yeah. You actually, uh, you, you have a fan here from uh, from camps, a young lady who is 10 we years old. We all played together, yeah. if I thought we were brothers. Yeah. All brothers. <laughs> Would you like to share your story? I thought it was great. I think everyone will appreciate it. Well, and I don't know if it's going to reach the whole way. Well, I knew my dad was going to play against this team from Fresno, where Kenzo was from. And I used to hear about Could the Could you brothers. actually stand up while you Oh. <laughs> so, I knew about the father. Oh, wait, and introduce yourself. Oh, I'm Helen, formerly Hinaga, in Magala now. But in camp, I was running around, you know, watching my dad play. Then I heard the Zenimura boys who were coming. <laughs> and I knew what they looked like. And I was only 11. <laughs> but I went to where they were dressing, their dressing room. I tried to get in just to get an autograph. Sure. Because to me, they were just like all stars. Well, they were all stars, but I wanted to see them in person. And I did when they came out, and they were very cordial. And I'll always remember that as one of my fondest memories of Heart Mountain. And this is the first time to see him again? Yes, so. it yeah. is. <laughs> Just a few more photos. Actually, this photograph right here was taken at Gila River by Maury Shimada. The gentleman squatting on deck, that's Tetsuhiro Kawa, and Kenji Zenager is hitting. Uh, this is one of the a rare photographs of the, the field at Gila River. 
Uh, so I just wanted to, to share that. Uh, this is probably from the 1943 trip, when uh, Maury Shimada was part of the team that visited. Or do you think it's 45? No, it has to be 43. 43? 43, okay. okay. Uh, Tets, could you tell us a little about this photograph sitting around the, the table? <clears throat> Uh, during our trip to Heart Mountain, uh, we were often uh, invited uh, to banquets and parties and our, to the homes of uh, uh, different various people that <laughs> live in Heart Mountain. And this evening, uh, we were invited to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Sugita's home. Um, uh, I believe that they were from uh, Oahu and they were uh, friends with the Zenimuras when uh, Mr. Zenimura was in Hawaii. So I think their friendship lasted and by golly, when we went to Heart Mountain, uh, they invited us and uh, most of the team members are there. But if you look on the uh, back, standing with the, the gorgeous mother, there are four beautiful daughters there. <laughs> <laughs> All the players, they, we fought to go to that party. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, when Hartman closed up, uh, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Subida and the family went back to Oahu, Hawaii. So I'm starting to see where they called it Heart Mountain, huh? <laughs> a lot of luck. <laughs> going on at Heart Mountain. That's great. See, we wouldn't have known that unless we all came here today. That's nice. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so we, we talked about, uh, did everybody answer the question or the, who wanted to uh, share with us your most vivid memory or favorite memory from the Heart Mountain Gila experience? Because otherwise I'll go through maybe some of the highlights of the games and, and maybe that will, okay, we'll, we'll do that then, okay? So let's go back to some action photos while we're talking. All right. So I'm going to try to do this in my best ESPN highlight. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pause for a second. I just want to know who took these photos. Uh, this a lot of them came from the Maury Shimada collection. So it's his cameras, but many times he's in the photo. So obviously he didn't take it if he's in the picture. Right. So, but, but these aren't like Ansel, because there are Ansel Adams photos as well. Yeah, these are not part of the Ansel Adams right. photograph. Right. Collection. So yeah. these are, these are played, take, these are photos taken by people in the camps. Correct, correct. And actually, this is a good spot to maybe talk about the rules around cameras in the camp, because I've seen some conflicting information and, and maybe the rules changed over time. But I heard that early on cameras were not allowed and that people kind of snuck the cameras in. But then I also read that they loosened up the rules a little bit and allowed people to bring cameras in. Uh, anybody, is that everybody's understanding? Okay. Uh, and I also do want to share with you, and we'll go over it over the Q&A session, I found video footage of baseball games at a hard mountain. So we'll display it here today. And Carrie's got some special video footage as well that we're going to share. So we get to see some moving pictures from 1944 and 1927 here in a little bit. Okay. All right, so I'll walk us through the games. I'll try to make it uh, quick because it's 13 games, but just hit the highlights. And, uh, and it gives us some context of what's happening. Uh, game one, 3,000 people attended. That's a lot of people. Uh, Bill Shundo versus George Fujiaka. Uh, it was Hila versus the Zebra A's. The score ended up being 7-3 to three for, for Hila. George Shiraki and Chi Akazuki were the star players of that game. Chi drove in the, the third and final run for... Uh, the Heart Mountain Boys, or the Zebra A's. Game two was 11 innings, an extra inning game. You know, it finished up at 10 to seven. It was Russell Hanaga pitching against Frank Shiraki. Did I say that name correctly? Okay. The game was tied seven all in the 11th inning. Kenso Zenimura was a home run short of hitting the cycle in that game. Single, double, triple, so. <laughs> <laughs> He's modest. Yeah. Okay. And Key Ishimoto was three for five at the plate, and he actually stole home against Russell Hanaga, who was pitching. 
uh, a lot of stolen bases in this series. I hear that that was one of the overwhelming factors. Uh, that was part of your strategy, using speed? Okay. All right. Game three, Lefty Fujioka versus George Asari with the amateurs. Asari pitched a shutout for five innings. Wow. Yeah, and Kiko Bayashi says uh, that the team, got, Hilo, got really lucky to pull it out in extra innings, or at the end of the game. Game four, Takabo versus Tex Watanabe. Is that correct? Okay. All right. Uh, he would won five to one, and again, lots of stolen bases, a lot by uh, Ki Ishimoto. And this is the Block 20 team, and a gentleman by the name of Kiso Osumi hit a double to spoil Takamoto's shutout. Uh, and then at this point, Kiko Bayashi shares in his journal that you guys stayed in a room that had 17 cots lined up. Is that, is that correct? Probably. Maybe? Okay. okay. And that there was a rule in the room that you had to pay 10 cents if you were cursing. You got, there's a, okay, you had to put money in the jar. Okay. And he also talked about how playing the games at the high altitude was very difficult to breathe, making that adjustment as ball players. Like you would run a double and be winded, but you recovered. Okay. At least that was Ki Kobahashi's perspective. All right. So game five, uh, Hila won 11 to two versus the Zebra A's and the Amateurs, a combined team. Um, let's see, oh, this was interesting. The bases were loaded with one out and Zenny was catching. And uh, he decided he saw the man on second was leading off too far, gunned the ball down to second base. They were able to tag that runner out and the runner at third tried to go home and Kenzo got the ball and threw the runner out at home. So they finished the inning. Uh, the bases loaded. You guys got it. Yes, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm glad I could help you. <laughs> All right. Game six, according to my records, is Zenimir versus Russell Hinata. So, uh, Hila won five to four against the Zebra Bees in the Block 20 team. Hila was down two to three in the ninth inning uh, and ended up scoring three runs to win. Uh, Zenimir was pitching, and in the third inning, a gentleman by the name of Snooks Kato hit a line drive and busted Zenmir's kneecap. Oh. Is that, that correct? Snooks? That's it? Snooks, Snooks Kano. Kano? Kano? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I got a lot of this information from the camp newspapers. Um, and so, I apologize if I don't say the names right, I'm trying. Uh, but some of it's wrong in the, in the papers as well. And even Chesky, at one point, is mentioned as ghosty. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, the papers get it wrong uh, even today and back then. Okay. So here we are in Game 7. Now we're moving into the All-Star Series. Game 7, the All-Stars, uh, wait, the yeah, Heart Mountain All-Stars won 5-4. to four, All right. Maurice Shimada hit a triple. The team was down 4-3 to three with two men on, and so he hit the triple and drove in the two winning runs to win 5-4. to four. Uh, George Osiri came in to relief in the ninth inning and got the victory. All right. <laughs> Way to go, George. All right. Game eight, Hart Mountain All-Stars win three to two. George Osiri pitched uh, another victory. The game was tied 1-1 in the sixth inning. Uh, Russell Hanaga and Mori Shimada had key hits. Takabo hit a home run, uh, but it was just a little too late in the game to really uh, help the All-Stars, or Hilo River. Uh, Zenimura, your father, was on the DL for the day, and he took the day off to rest his knee. All right? Game nine, Hila wins 15 to 19 in a slugfest. Zenny's back in the field, and Takabo uh, went three for five for the day with two doubles. Okay? Game 10, Russell Hanaga pitched a shutout, the only shutout of the series, six to nothing. He pitched a four hitter. Uh, Chi Akazuki had a double, Fuzzy Shimada had a triple, and it was this game where they really talked about his nickname being the War Horse, uh, which I saw, thought was a great nickname. Uh, game 11, Hila won six to three. Uh, Fujioka versus Wananabe. Babe Nomura had a double. Uh, let's see, the Gila Stars uh, ended up winning the series, but Heart Mountain demonstrated great passion, great ability, and great sportsmanship. And so Gila won that series four to three. So that was the best of seven. And then two final games were added. Uh, maybe you had more time or just wanted to keep playing. Uh, the Zebra A's played a, a, in the Block 20 co combo team. Played Gila, Gila won five to four. This also went into the eleventh inning. Uh, Tex Watanabe had a triple, lots of triples. Uh, Tex Furukawa had a triple. 
Key Ishimoto, Billy Shundo had a triple, and in the 11th inning, Mori Shimada won the game on a sacrifice fly and, and drove in the final run. The second game uh, was canceled that day. We were going to play a doubleheader because a dust storm came in. <laughs> Remember that? Okay. All right. And then uh, game 13, the Gila Stars versus the San Jose Asahi Veterans. So this appears to be the, the veterans of the San Jose team. Uh, Lefty Fujioka was the winning pitcher, and Kenzo Zenagara finished uh, three for five at the plate, leading the, the Gila team to the victory. So that's the 13 games and a quick ESPN highlight summary. So, but it really, it, it's not all about what happened on the field. It's about the opportunity to go. Uh, and play, and I was going to share this in my in the opening, but uh, I'll take a moment and share it now. I'm going to uh, let me make sure I have my notes. So Kerry Nakagawa often shares the quote that uh, for Japanese Americans, putting on a baseball uniform is like uh, putting on the American flag. And I uh, think about these the trip to Heart Mountain, and uh, think about that quote in this context. These trips are their declarations of independence. This is them saying, we're free, we're going to get on the road, and baseball was their ticket to freedom. So that's my uh, kind of symbolic view of why this series is so important. Of course, there are others that took place, but this one in 1944 with a combination of the younger ball players and the older ball players, it really is a nice uh, symbolism of the passing of the torch from the, from the earlier generation to the younger generation. And they went on and played in Japan, played in college, coached, and some of their ball players now are at the major league level. So to see the ripple effects and that impact, that's, that's a beautiful thing to see. Uh, then the final thing I'd like to share, just in terms of kind of a, a symbolic view of, of the series and why it's, I think, important. Uh, former baseball commissioner, Bart Giamatti, he was also a... Uh, a professor of literature at Yale. Not many people knew that, but he loved baseball just as much as he loved the classics, uh, the Greek classics. And that's why baseball appealed to, to him, because he felt that baseball was like uh, a story of a Greek hero going on a journey. You leave home and you travel the world and you face peril and adventure, etc. And you come back a hero. And, and in addition, you also come back with a new perspective on life, etc. It's like a rite of passage. And for all the young ball players who went on a tour or a, a, a trip like that, this was their uh, rite of passage, and they came back a, a, a hero, so to speak. So anyway, just wanted to share kind of the, the literary interpretation of that as well. All right, so why don't we shift gears into the, the Q&A session, open it up to the, the public, and uh, we'll ask, get, get some questions and, and go from there. Would anybody like to start? And, all right. Now, uh, in terms of, uh, let's see, the microphone situation would probably... It's not a question so much as just a comment. Okay. I was in Gila, and I was quite young at the time, but the Zenimura brothers were like stars. And, uh, <laughs> and my dad was a great baseball fan, and so we went to every game we could play. It's so nice to finally meet a Zenimura. <laughs> Shake uh, Howard's hand when you have a chance, okay? I will. Yeah, we'd like you to actually physically shake hands and meet. <laughs> After all this time, yeah. And then you could get an autograph. Oh. <laughs> I was only 16. My brother was only 15. I was younger than you at the time. I remember you well. We used to go to every game you had. My dad loved the team. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I was in uh, Hartmount for a short time, but anyway, uh, everybody was rushing out for looking for a mattress cover. And uh, uh, they were making a baseball uniform for the mattress cover. You know that? I know my mother sold a couple pair of pants and uh, uh, how do you get the mattress out of the warehouse? I said, well, we burned a hole in the mattress, so we need a new mattress. So everybody was burning holes in the mattress to get a new mattress and make a uniform. So 
for one time they used to have that uh, Yankee strike up and down. So they used to call me Yankee. They had a, a mattress cover made of a striped uh, a mattress cover. I don't think you guys have ever seen that before now. I see one uniform out of the striped, gray, gray and white striped uh, mattress. <laughs> Yes. When you talk about uh, using the mattress cover, well, when I went into uh, camp from Guadalupe, I carried a suitcase and a duffel bag. And uh, after I had come back, and I was invest I still have my suitcase that I went to camp, and I still have the duffel bag. And one day, uh, I turned the uh, duffel bag inside out, and somebody said, look, look, uh, your mother made this duffel bag from a blue rose rice bag. <laughs> they used to have a, a hundred pound rice bag, and then it was faintly, you could see it. <laughs> I think maybe it came from Dos Palos or someplace, but then it was a blue rose, uh, uh, right back, yeah. Actually, Ted, since you have the microphone, can you actually uh, talk about the bus ride and the journey from Gila River to Heart Mountain and your preparation and anticipation of any dangers along the way? Well, looking back, uh, all these... Uh, 70 years over. Uh, I've heard of the Zenimuras because I was from Guadalupe. And uh, Guadalupe would play uh, San Jose, uh, Fresno, the, the, the LA Nippons, and etc. And we had a, uh, a good Guadalupe church uh, baseball team. And so I always, from a youngster, I knew about the Zenimuras and the Hinagas and and the Aloy Nippon, the Mat Matsura brothers, and etc. So, but then when we got to Gila River in uh, 1942 August, uh, we went from uh, Tulare Assembly Center, and uh, uh, Kenzo's family went from uh, Fresno Assembly Center, and we met at uh, uh, Gila River, and uh, we've been uh, friends <laughs> ever since. <laughs> Knock on wood. You want to shake on that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's high celebrity, so he refuses to shake my hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, 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 to be sure, uh, I was very elated to be uh, picked uh, from Coach Zenimara to be on the team that was going to journey all the way to Heart Mountain. And when we got on the trailway bus in Phoenix, it was the first time that we had left uh, the Indian Reservation. And we thought, gee, boy, th th to breathe the fresh air of the country, you know, we were all confined in the Indian Reservation for two and a half years. And it was a, really a thrill to even get uh, the Santa Fe Trailway bus with an old dilapidated bus that only went 45 miles an hour, but that it was really a, a, a thrill to have uh, gone all the way to uh, uh, Heart Mountain, Wyoming. And, and uh, it's amazing that uh, I still remember Georgie Seri over here. Uh, recently I went to a a uh, funeral for our third uh, left fielder, Ted Hatsugawa, that made the tour to uh, Heart Mountain, and he passed away, so I went to his funeral, and then after the funeral was o over, uh, a gentleman comes up to me and says, Hey, Ted, uh, you may not remember me, but uh, my name is Kichi Kenta. I said, Oh, you're the all-star player from uh, Heart Mountain, so you don't know who or when that you might uh, meet one of these days, and uh, I have some really nice memories here, and maybe Kenzo would like to share some with me. <laughs> <laughs> this, this 
kind of amazing, you know, he knows a lot of things that I can't remember. <laughs> it's, it's been over 60 to 70 years now since uh, a lot of these things have happened, but Ted Sear, he can still remember things, and he can still remember names. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I just, I just uh, you know, I'm too old already. <laughs> This, this happened, like I said, 60, 70 years ago. And, uh, and uh, uh, Ted's here, with, he's, he's a bright kid too. He used to be a, uh, a student body president. <laughs> and uh, I respected him. <laughs> and when he joined our team, uh, we, we, we became good friends. And, um, we played together uh, at the Butte High School. In fact, that was the last year that we had a the first time we had a Butte High School baseball team that we competed against, you know, the outside schools. And uh, it just happened that uh, we beat one of the best teams in uh, Arizona High School. And this guy was a pitcher, and and uh, and he remembers all the details and how everything happened. Uh, and Bill over here, he. He also knows everything too because through the internet you find out a lot of these things. <laughs> In fact, I can't remember some of these things. And, and, and my daughter in law says, Look up your name in the internet, you'll come up with a lot of things. And I was surprised to find out what went on. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, like, uh, like, Tets and I, we went, when we went to Hard Mountain, we, we, we didn't go on the same bus. We went in two groups uh, so that we were not, uh, you know, that conspicuous. And uh, I guess, uh, Tess, you ran into some of the people that were, you know, against, uh, you know, Japanese uh, on the way. Uh, uh, what uh, Kenzo is referring to, uh, on the way, when we get off at a little town uh, to uh, go to the bathroom or whatever, and then there would be uh, a band of uh, uh, big Caucasians, and they would say, hey, they call us derogatory names, like you've heard the Japs, you know, uh, what are you guys doing here and all that, and then about ready to beat up on us, and but then we told them, yeah, we're Japanese. Uh, we're from the concentration camp in Arizona, and uh, they give us a break. I, we uh, uh, all volunteered uh, for the war effort. We're traveling to Wyoming, Montana, to harvest the sugar beet crops and the potatoes and all that. So uh, we had uh, a lot of different kinds of experiences on the way, but uh, uh, these are some of the things that I could just remember, and then. My friend right to my right, he's really a modest guy, but over the years he's told me all about his life, so every once in a while I can <laughs> talk about him. <it>, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, that's it for now. <laughs> you want to add something? You know, uh, I, I met, uh, I made a lot of good friends with some of the people from San Jose, like Mori Shimada. Uh, Maury was uh, played for the San Jose uh, team, uh, Zebra, and also he came to Hard Mountain. I mean, he came to Gila, and when I met, went to Hard Mountain, he also treated me uh, real well. And even when I went into the service, um, uh, uh, when I got discharged, I got discharged from uh, Letterman General Hospital, and he. And as a friend, he came out and picked me up wow. and uh, uh, brought me home to Fresno. In fact, uh, he said, let's take a long way home. <laughs> so we went all the way down the Highway 101 to Los Angeles, or Santa Barbara and Los Angeles, and then back to Fresno. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, uh, doing something like that for me was, you know, it, 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 it you know, uh, it was a, uh, 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 it was something that was uh, I appreciate, and uh, I played against Chi Akuziki. Uh He was also uh, played for uh, 
Hard Mountain, came to Hila and played uh, against him in Hard Mountain. And also, uh, when the person Lise came, played against San Jose Zebra, uh, he played uh, against me. And, and Chester Ogadarki, uh, he also was uh, came both ways uh, to uh, Hila, and we played against each other in uh, uh, Hard Mountain. Uh, another person that came was uh, Dave Nomura. Uh, he, uh, he came to uh, Har uh, Gila, and when we went to Hard Mountain, he was there too. And then when I played in college, um, uh, Chester played for San Jose State, and uh, Dave Nomura played for San Jose State, and we played against each other because I played for Fresno State. And we also became good friends. And I had another good friend by the name of James Kugura that uh, also uh, was uh, uh, in uh, Gila. He lived in Gila and uh, we became good friends because he was in our, he was in our class uh, in 1945. And uh, when I was in the service, uh, 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 going to school at Mon Monterey uh, at the MIS school, uh, I used to come down to San Jose, or even his start all the way over here one time, and he used to take care of me uh, over the weekend, and we became real good friends too. And uh, I'm sorry that he passed away last year, so, you know, in fact, Tits and I said, oh, tomorrow, well, uh, let's go Hakamari. And, uh, well, we're going to do that uh, just before we go home. Uh, the Kukuras were one of the few uh, families from San Jose that were in Hila. But uh, we were, like uh, Kenzo just said, that uh, James Kukura and the, the three of us were classmates, so we graduated the Hila High School in June of 1945, and it was always a thrill for us to, uh, when I would uh, drive through San Jose and to go to my uh, wife's uh, Furusato and Lodai, well, we'd always stop at Kogura's, and we'll see uh, James and T and Carol and, and, and have a real good time, and. Uh, and uh, we were just uh, reminiscing that, uh, well, um, hey James, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. So uh, uh, I guess maybe Carolyn's going to take us. I don't know where to go. <laughs> we're lost. <laughs> okay. So we've talked a lot about the, the uh, camp experience during the war. The, this history is before the war, during the war, and, and after. And Masao, as the senior member of our panel here, could you talk a little bit maybe about your, your pre-war playing experience, maybe against San Jose and some of the ball players? I know you had some articles that you, when you were with Guadalupe, if you want to share some of those highlights. Or even in 1943, you were part of the Guadalupe team that played against uh, the Heart Mountain vis visiting team as well. I, I didn't play against the Hot Mountain team. Oh, you didn't? Yeah. 43? And, uh, I was a little bit old. Okay. <laughs> you weren't eligible? These, these people are about five years younger. Okay. <laughs> How about before the war with San Jose? Before the war? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Mas, Masao uh, Iriyama. And, uh, I was born in uh, uh, San Pedro, California. And, uh, but when I was two years old, I went to Japan with my family. And uh, I, I stayed in uh, Wakayama. And uh, I was raised in Japan, so my English is not like uh, uh, Ted's and uh, uh, Zeng Rasan and uh, Kevin Nagawa-san. I, uh, I started uh, playing baseball in fourth and fifth grade in grammar school in Japan. And I was a pitcher, and my position was a pitcher and a third baseman. And um, I came back to uh, 
uh, United States in 1938, and that's about three years, uh, three and a half years before the war. And uh, uh, in 1939, uh, I went to uh, uh, Santa Maria High School, but uh, I couldn't speak English, I couldn't understand, uh, no, uh, I don't speak nothing, uh, English. But uh, baseball is an uh, international uh, sport, so uh, I'm able to play. And I met a uh, uh, varsity uh, shortstop, and uh, you probably know uh, uh, name Kathy uh, 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 Harada. He was the second baseman, and uh, uh, I was a kind of combination with him in 1940. And uh, uh, same time, I started playing for Guadalupe uh, YNBA, and uh, I stayed shortstop. And, uh, in 1942, of April, we evacuated, uh, well, we uh, evacuated. Uh, we supposed to go to uh, Hira Camp, but uh, at the time, uh, Hira Camp wasn't ready. So we went to uh, Prairie uh, Assembly Center. Uh, I, I stayed until uh, October. And, uh, we stayed kind of softball, no hardball uh, field, so uh, you can't play uh, hardball over there. So October of uh, 1942, uh, I moved to uh, Hira, Hira camp. Then uh, uh, spring of 1943, uh, you know, hobby, uh, Jay Marsan's uh, father worked so hard and made a hardball run for, for the camp. And uh, the first uh, opening game was in uh, March of 1943. And the uh, and uh, one of the team from uh, up north played for the opening game. And uh, we won the uh, game that time. Uh, I played uh, against them and I had a I think four, eight, four or five on that game. So I, I have a, a little bit on, on the team. And uh, I stayed one year in, in uh, Hira, and a year later, um, I moved to uh, Tulegate camp. And uh, we made the same Guadalupe team, and uh, we won the uh, championship in 19 over 400 something. So, uh, Just a little over 400. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got a little uh, uh, trophy. Yeah. So it, it's a small, small trophy, but uh, it gave me a big uh, memory for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I. I played, uh, it, it, uh, it was 1941, or 40 or 41, I played against uh, uh, Sanjay Asahi. Uh, and uh, we lost the 4 to 2. But uh, the pitcher was uh, Lefty uh, Honda. He won the uh, best of Nikkei uh, uh, pitcher. But uh, I got a home run up here. <laughs> So, I never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, somebody gave me a uh, uh, old Rafu 1940 uh, Rafu simple. Uh -huh. The article was in there. The paper was in there. So I gave it to uh, Kelly Dakota. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to say that uh, back in 1943 at Gila River when uh, Russell Hinaga and Goji Matsui, they brought the Sparrow baseball team to Gila to play uh, the various teams in Gila. 
And I think that one of the finest game in that series was when Masao Uriyama's Guadalupe BYNBA uh, beat Heart Mountain 3-2. to two. <laughs> I think that, that we were all there and I think that was one of the classics. The Guadalupe beating uh, San Jose uh, Heart Mountain 3-2 to two, and uh, Masao Uriyama was a shortstop and his brother was the center fielder. Very impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hey, on that uh, note, I was able to get the, the video up and going, so why don't we turn the lights off, and uh, we'll take a video journey back to Heart Mountain. It's about four minutes long, but it, it'll be a nice, uh, nice thing to watch here. I want to see those flowers again. Yo, you will. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to do the, the voiceover of the gentleman who recorded this. That's my father there. I think he's holding the snap dragon. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it, asters. Now, you see the butterflies flying now? There's your flowers. <laughs> that's why the youngsters enjoyed the nation study classes. Because nowhere else in the camp, unless there's flowers, these butterflies and bees would come. Now well, that's my mother in the back. Now this is one of the Scout, Boy Scout leaders. He is from Sacramento. Very capable man leading different uh, community activities. These are the youngsters. One of the boys, he looks at boys, I understand, he is a professor in Santa Clara Valley. I forgot whether he was in Stanford or, or Gadolin College. This is showing uh, zinnias and marigolds. There's some purple ones, or the asters. Oh, these are the neighborhood kids. They're gathered together. Get it together with one afternoon with Phil Matsumura, his father. Phil Matsumura's father was a leader uh, in this community. There's our barrack again.
think that's it for the baseball footage. Um, but what a, what a rare gem to find, you know, to have footage of the games being played. That's great. Um, Just also shows how many, the crowds there, it's really impressive. The whole yeah. camp turns out for the game. Yeah, the captive audience. Yeah, well, <laughs> that helps. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, on that note, uh, let's keep the lights dark out. Let's share, if we could, uh, kind of the historical perspective of Japanese American baseball in film. Let's share the, the 20 okay. seconds, okay? You, you set it up and I'll do the technical stuff. You go. Uh, a couple of weeks ago at the National Baseball Hall of Fame at Cooperstown, they had their uh, annual film festival. So they showed a, a film that I was able to produce called American Pastime. Uh, shameless plug, but it's about uh, baseball, jazz music, and a love story told in the Topaz, Utah uh, concentration camp. But prior to the screening, uh, we showed 21 seconds that we're going to share with you today. And on October 29th of this month, it's going to be 87 years since this footage was taken. And I was able to Skype uh, myself from my office to Cooperstown because there was a a sold out audience wanting to see uh, our movie and this footage. And real briefly, it's kind of a long story, but I'm gonna try and keep it brief, but uh, five years ago, uh, Kenzo's uh, niece, Gail uh, Zanimura, passed away. Uh, she battled for years uh, breast cancer, and uh, she passed away, and uh, at the, uh, uh, at Gail, her, her sister's house, uh, Kenso and Betty were there, and the Toshiyuki family were close friends to the family. Had mentioned that they found this uh, 16 millimeter reel that said Babe Ruth on it, and said, asked Kenso, you know, what do you think that's on it? Could it be your dad? And this famous photo of Kenichi Zanimura, Fred Yoshikawa, Harvey Wata, my uncle Johnny, were part of this team in '27 when they barnstormed to California because no California people could see Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. We didn't have Major League Baseball until 1958 with the LA Dodgers and San Francisco Giants. It was all Pacific Coast League teams. So this promoter in 1927 decided to bring them to five, eight different cities, San Francisco, Sacramento, San Jose, Fresno, and get all the local all-star baseball players from that region. Well, I feel through Gale's spirit we were led to this footage because uh, Kenso gave me the canister. I recruited a, a friend at the Fresno Library to find a projector that could project it. And in the middle of all this family footage, uh, like Mr. Sakue's right here, we saw at Heart Mountain, was this 21 seconds of Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig, my Uncle Johnny, Kenso's dad. And uh, you see Babe Ruth, uh, doing batting practice, Lou Gehrig going out to first base. What's the beautiful part of this story is that all the Nisei were on Lou Gehrig's team and they beat Babe Ruth 13-3. And uh, my uncle Johnny went one for two and had a stolen base. Kenichi had a stolen base. Yoshikawa uh, had a double. And as we know in today's world, we could Photoshop any image onto anybody in a still, but when you see this footage, you see the chemistry and the camaraderie of these Nisei with Ruth and Gary again. As I call it, the first encounter of the Nisei kind because <laughs> there wasn't too many Japanese Americans in Manhattan, in New York. So uh, I gotta believe, especially Gary, came away with a lot of respect for them as ball players. Uh, uh, especially Gary, because you know, they helped him beat Babe Ruth 13 to three. So. <laughs> Uh, and I think they wanted to always prove too that you know any time like the Negro Leaguers, uh, they wanted to play with the best ball players because they had to play in leagues of their own, much like our Nisei ball players. Uh, that's why I'm so proud of Travis Ishikawa and Don Wakamatsu because uh, you know they have the tools, they have the heart and the passion. Uh, these guys, as well as their parents in the 20s and 30s, had the heart, had the passion. They just never got an opportunity. So uh, we're really, uh, the players of today are standing on, on their shoulders because each one of these panel members, if they were given an opportunity, we could have maybe seen them playing the ball in, at a major league level and raising the bar there as well. 
So when you look at this footage, uh, it's gonna go fast, it's 21 seconds, but then I kind of slowed it down and you know, just watch the chemistry and the faces of Garrick and Ruth when uh, they come together for this uh, group shot. Forget the lights. Yes, October 29, 1940, at Fireman's Ballpark in Fresno. There's Gary, I mean Ruth, pre-game, pre taking batting practice. You really see how a, huge he was. He was gigantic. And that's a 52-inch uh, bat he used. <laughs> During this game when Zinni uh, kept taking big leads and he'd come back trying to tag him out, he got upset and he says, if you uh, try doing that again, I'm going to use you as my bat. <laughs> That's Lou Gehrig going out to first base. See how Lou Gehrig is squatting in, then he's pulling him into the picture. And the whole time you can see Ruth just jabbering. <laughs> You sure what, Yeah, I'm yeah. so happy. Is this the second time he's been shown in front of us? Yeah, that's it. Okay, that's it. All right. Wow, that's amazing. This is the old Japanese ballpark in Fresno that the Issei built out of hand tools in the early 20s. So maybe when we move downstairs, we could have this playing if somebody would like to watch it a little bit more. Okay? All right. That's great. Thank you. Well, according to my watch, we're maybe two minutes over. So uh, that's pretty good. That's not too bad. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here today. Really appreciate it. Our panel members, thank you. What an honor. Let's give them a round of applause. Right. So next. Okay. Uh, we're going to do one more quick uh, And, and Roy, photo. do you want to add something or do you want to transition? Well, I'd like to thank everybody to come here, but you know, I was thinking, gee, when I was in uh, Fresno, I should have went to Hilo or Hot Mountain. No. I, I ended up in Arkansas, I, so I couldn't see all these great ball players <laughs> play anyway. Well, anyway, um, at the conclusion of this uh, meeting, they're having a book signing from Bill Staples. Uh, he, he wrote a book about Kenichi's in a room. I, I took a glance at it. It looks pretty good. <laughs> and Kerry Nakagawa, Japanese American Baseball. Uh, I, I read some of his book. Pretty good too. <laughs> and of course, we have our own uh, Ralph Pierce. He wrote a book on, on uh, Asahi and Zebras. I'd like you to purchase that. In fact, I got a little article in there too. You know what, Ralph? <laughs> so was that uh, so was that Ma Maurice good? and Moss also <laughs> she has a book down there called Bob Water and Baseball. So thank you again, all you old timers. Uh, I don't know how you guys can remember seven years ago. That's pretty good. <laughs>